I love that you referenced the ice machine. Cause that's yeah, one of those, yeah. Like, that's one Mystic. of those urban legends. No, that I it can was for real. Seeing. And if you were on it during the first, say, uh, 45 days, you got to see it because it was definitely there. And it was really cool. It worked amazingly cool. So That would was... work and then the rat projection wouldn't work. Yeah. And now the rat projection is pretty good, but there's new ways to do it and higher definition. And that's the constant trouble with technology is you're chasing it all the time. Mm -hmm. Do you mind retelling the story of the ice machine on the Indiana Jones ride? Sure. Um, one of the things we tried to do, and we we're able to do it, was um, create a situation where the eye of Mara, you know, shatters the ceiling, and a whole lot of the the ceiling gives way and falls directly in the ride path and breaks. And I had been searching for a way to do that because if you use foam or whatever, they all manage to just round themselves off into balls, you know, and uh, all the fluff and everything that keeps giving way, um, dirties everything up in the room. So we came up with the idea that ice is essentially a rock and a liquid and a gas, depending on how hot it is, the same as every other mineral. So it's just a little bit lower, it's, it's, it's uh, hard temperature is a little lower or higher than most rocks. You know, like you can melt aluminum and whatnot. Uh, also, just like you can water. Um, so we did that and it looked fantastic when those boulders would hit, it was a hundred pounds and when it would hit, um, it shattered into, you know, pieces that went scattering all over and it would eventually build up after about four hours or so. And then there'd be an avalanche of all of it just sliding down the mountain. So if you were on the bridge, you'd look back over there and there'd be this giving way thing. You just went, Oh my God, how are they doing? This is amazing. So I was really disappointed when we, we, you know, but the, the attitude was, well, there's so much other stuff going on and people are so amazed that, you know, others voted that it was, you know, expendable. So, oh, well, you win some and you lose some. <laughs> but you said that that was there for a month. So there yeah. were a month mm -hmm. worth, yeah. months worth of people who yeah. saw it. Yeah. I saw it. it was oh, you did? Amazing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it was every 18 seconds. We had to go up to Salinas and we found an ice machine that was used in the picking of broccoli and other, uh, you know, uh, vegetables that had to be frozen immediately. And so that was uh, able to do 100 pounds of ice every like 15 seconds, you know, and so, and then once it got to the bottom, there was a screw that um, it kind of traveled up and it got up to the top and it was mixed with fresh water and compacted into a, a, a block and colored with tea which was you know a uh, vegetable substance so it wasn't toxic or anything and it looked like a big old round or brown boulder you know so when, when you guys... we talk about something that's actually there <laughs> <laughs> when you guys think of ideas mm -hmm. you know, such as that one what is i mean is there a certain point where you have to decide that this is just isn't going to work or how oh yeah because i mean it must have taken forever to be like oh we're gonna that wouldn't have gone in if um if it hadn't have worked exactly yeah but even no. to get to that point it must have been we do a lot of mock-ups and in case of the that it was it was demonstrated out on our parking lot and it worked fine you know it's just that when you run it all day long at night the ice brings the whole area down in temperature and so Disneyland maintenance had to go in and try to break up the ice down at the bottom and get it to flow. And I would have put a heater in there. I think that would have melted it and then just sent it back up. And that wasn't my, you know, responsibility at that time. So, um, you know, but in terms of all the projects we do, um, you go through not just coming up with the idea, but then you have to time test it and, and get a reliability over a period of time, you know, so that um, you can walk away from it for weeks or months and that every day when you start up in the morning it, it comes on so that's got to be it's something they don't have to do in Hollywood like an explosion in Hollywood one shot after they film it from every possible venue then uh, they walk away and say that's a wrap and they throw it all away and they generally uh, arrange their filming so that the, the disaster part of the set is the last thing they do you know where okay, tomorrow we blow it up, so you better shot all the, the good stuff before this. So, you know, it's a one-time deal, but with us, it's forever. And with all of the many attractions you've been involved in, can you, can you in any way distill how the process of creating something like that has changed over time? 
Well, in some ways a lot, and in some ways not. So technology gives you a whole lot of new tools to use in the rides, like um, we're using a lot of uh, integration of digital imagery into rides. Um, you couldn't really do that very well with film. We did, like older rides, like the Haunted Mansion, have a few instances of uh, actual film that was projected on a regular cinema projector with loops of film running through. And um, so it's, it was doable, but um, today, the fact that it's all, there is no moving parts, it's just digital storage of data. And the resolutions become higher and higher, so you're able to do things like what Luke showed you today in the pirate ride that um, just maybe five years ago, you couldn't have gotten the resolution up to where you could, you know, uh, people can enter a space like that and totally believe in something that, you know, as he, as he said, 12 times the size of a screen. Mm -hmm. Um, so those kind of abilities are constantly changing, opening up new windows. But on the other side of it, of like coming up with an idea and figuring out um, how we're going to prove this out, you build the models and you do sketches and you do all the same things. And those tools, I don't think, go obsolete. You know, we have a what we call a dish where you can put a headset on or walk into a virtual space. And that helps. But... Um, in the end, you know, you don't really get the sense of what it's actually like to see the fully rendered thing any better that way than you do with a little cardboard model. And a cardboard model, you can have management and everybody pick it up and look at it. And like they were saying, you could, I think Luke mentioned, you could roll the a single person down between the ships so you could see it. And so um, we use all of it, you know. You use, if you want to get it really quick but crude, then you use a, a digital mock-up. And then if you really want to talk about where the barnacles look the best and how many of them you need, a model, a real model, you know, to put all that in. So you've been part of so many iconic attractions. I'm pretty sure all of us only know your attractions because... I, I'm one of the oldest, and I never got to experience Nature's Wonderland or anything. Oh. But Big Thunder is Disneyland to me. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite attraction of yours, mm -hmm. or just overall? No, I tell people um, that all of them have their their moment where it's like having a new a kid. You know, while you're having that kid is what your whole life is about. You know, and then it becomes one of the children. Then you can't say, well, this child is better than that. But that being said, I can tell you what was the most fun and or challenging uh, to work on. And that would be from a ride standpoint, getting to do Indiana Jones. It, it had it, it had so many bases um, that it was probably one of the coolest things to get to do. And Disneyland Paris from the challenge of like taking kind of the innocent American view of things back to a very sophisticated Western uh, viewpoint. You know, in some ways, going into, say, um, Asia is bringing something where, uh, you know, the ability to read it is a little bit blunted compared to how well uh, Westerners can read something that's designed for Westerners. It's sort of like if I was looking at four different dynasties of temples over there, I wouldn't have the refinement to go, well, that's the Ming dynasty and this one is this. I don't, you know, they're just all temples. And I think, you know, so Asia is a little more forgiving on that. Whereas going into Paris where, you know, if that Gothic column in the castle is wrong, you know, then you're in trouble. And, and so I said, let's not do Gothic columns. Let's do uh, fanciful trees that hold up the, so we don't get in comparison with Notre Dame or Chartres or any of the, you know, the, the, the Chanoso or Chambord, the castles. And, you know, by staying away from that, and having a dragon in the basement and fairy tale ramparts and stuff. It was it was better than say Walt Disney World, which is pretty much based on a lot of real castles in France. And that's fine because you'd have to travel 5,000 miles to see them. And uh, whereas we we're only about 100 miles away from all of those, so. In the creative process of all of these projects that you've worked on, which phase of it do you find the most rewarding? Would it be the brainstorming to come up with the concepts or the research and the, the creation of it or the end where everything is realized and you get to see the, the results of all your hard work? Um, 
That's sort of a weird question because I like the beginning and the end. I hate the middle. <laughs> it's great coming up with the idea and you go, we sold it. Oh my God, we're going to get to do it. And then the next day you go, how are we going to do it? You know, I don't have any idea how we're going to do it. And then there's a point, and it was funny because I was walking through uh, Animal Kingdom and into the Avatar area and, I, and they're all worried about how are we going to get done. I said, you're done. I said, all of it from now is going to be fun, making it more beautiful, making it gorgeous, seeing all the things come to life and all of that. That last part is like, because you know how all the systems are going to work. You know how all of the things are going to perform. You've, you've got your film or whatever it might be, uh, your figures and all that is starting to be visible. And so it's every day is like, what treat are they going to install today or turn on today that makes it a cooler and cooler thing all the way up to the end? So. Yeah, I'd like to go from coming up with the idea to decorating the Christmas tree is what I call it. You know, like, ooh, that's going to look really good there. This is going to be great there. In that vein, what ideas have you had that have maybe hit the cutting room floor, so to speak, oh, that you, that you uh, really uh, mourn, <laughs> for lack the of The land word. pavilion that we're going to do on ecology, back when ecology wasn't a big thing, it comes to mind. Discovery Bay which was a Jules Verne themed area that has come to life kind of in Discovery Land in Paris and the center volcano, uh, Volcania in Tokyo. So all of these things get used. And um, recently I've been working on a, a race thing where 40 people could race against each other in a thing where you see friends passing and getting around you and all that. And we got a patent on it, but I haven't been able to convince anybody what to do, but uh, who knows? I think that's actually time. That is time? time.